to all of you. Uh, I'm Benjamin Haute Couverture. I'm a senior research fellow at the Fondation pour la Recherche Stratégique à Paris. I'm delighted to welcome you to this fourth webinar of our Fondation on the topic of the 10th NPT Review Conference. As some of you, uh, I think, already know, because we have uh, followers, let's say, the FRS has decided since last June to accompany the postponement of the 2020 NPT RefCon by offering a series of webinars on specific aspects of the treaty's implementation. We have already addressed the postponement issue itself, we have put the treaty in perspective over the last 50 years of its implementation, as this year, of course, we are celebrating 50 years since uh, its entry into force. Uh, last month, we discussed the role of the EU in the NPT review process with uh, a few uh, European colleagues. And today we are opening up the issue of several uses of nuclear energy. And to deal with this uh, issue, which is naturally at the very heart of the treaty, whose uh, general purpose is to prevent the diversion of nuclear energy for purposes being prohibited by the treaty, I am pleased and I am very honored to have at my side the permanent representatives in Vienna of three countries that are very relevant in terms of peaceful uses. L'ambassadeur Xavier Sticker on behalf of France, Madame l'ambassadrice Lina Al Hadid on behalf of Jordan, and Monsieur Takeshi Ikiara uh, on behalf of Japan. And these three countries are also uh, states that are highly representative of the geographical challenges of civil uses. Europe, Asia, the Middle East being three regions of the world in which most of these uh, challenges are undoubtedly concentrated to varying extents. France and Japan are two countries that have been developing civil applications of nuclear energy for a long time. Both countries pursue peaceful uses in both power applications and various fields of non-power applications. They have been significant contributors to the work of the RAEA in that particular field as uh, of January 2019, for instance, one year ago, Japan had contributed over $34 million to the RAEA Peaceful Uses Initiative in total. As to Jordan, we know that the nuclear law was modified 13 years ago in 2007 to establish the Jordan Atomic Energy Commission and the Jordan Nuclear Regulatory Commission. And GAEC's functions include safety and security, nuclear science and technology, safe words and verification. And its commission is to transform Jordan from net energy importer to net electricity exporter by 2030, which was at that time very ambitious. And the process is ongoing. And maybe uh, Mrs. Ambassador Al Hadid will update us about it and about the latest Jordan's approach in uh, this area. And the questions raised by the civil uses of nuclear energy in uh, the context of the treaty, uh, and particularly in uh, the current review process, are very numerous, of course. Our meeting today, since we have one hour and 15 minutes approximately will address in Terralia the following issues. First, 
the NPT as the framework for a responsible development of nuclear peaceful uses. Second, peaceful uses and its relation to Vienna per se. Why has Vienna a specific role to play? What is the uh, perspective about it? And from theory to reality, how to promote a nuclear projects that support everyday life. And beyond these uh, specific issues, the subject of nuclear security, of course, is an issue in its own right, particularly since the end of, of the series of World Summits on Nuclear Security in 2016. The issue of the right to enrichment and reprocessing is also a major concern in the context of the review of Article 4 of the treaty and in the context of the development of nuclear energy worldwide. We may have the opportunity to address these issues uh, this afternoon, uh, uh, but our topic is a huge one. It's, very the, the, it's really the heart of, of, of uh, 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 our issues, including non-proliferation issues. And having said that, I would now, of course, uh, like to invite you to listen to our very distinguished speakers. Let's say uh, 10 minutes each before opening a question and comment session with, with our audience. So, Ambassador Sticker, permanent representative uh, of France, uh, through the United Nations Office and international organizations in Vienna. Uh, I leave uh, the floor to you. Please, Monsieur Ambassador. Thank you, Mr. Haute Couverture. You have uh, set the stage. Uh, and I would like to react uh, to uh, your uh, introductory uh, remarks. Um, well, first, I would like to stress that I'm very pleased and to be uh, here on this uh, panel alongside my uh, good colleagues uh, Lina El Hadi from and uh, Takeshi Hikihara uh, from uh, from Japan, uh, we are uh, good colleagues, good partners, friends, uh, representing countries that uh, are uh, committed uh, to uh, the NPT, committed uh, to uh, the uh, international cooperation in this uh, area. Uh, and uh, acting uh, here in Vienna uh, uh, across uh, the uh, uh, various uh, aspects uh, covered by the, the NPT. Uh, first pillar uh, with uh, CTBTO, second pillar with the uh, IAEA safeguards, uh, and uh, third pillar, uh, which is uh, the, the topic uh, for us uh, today uh, with the peaceful uses of nuclear uh, energy. And uh, in all these areas, we have uh, vivid bilateral corporations and we cooperate in a multilateral setting uh, to uh, advance uh, the uh, international agenda. Uh, second, uh, well, I'd like to, to stress to begin with, uh, whence I speak from, uh, well, I, uh, I'm here, uh, I'm speaking uh, from a French perspective, from the perspective of the uh, nuclear uh, weapon state, um, a state also uh, that is uh, heavily uh, involved uh, in uh, nuclear energy, uh, with uh, uh, its uh, status of being the third uh, producer of uh, uh, nuclear uh, power uh, electricity uh, worldwide, drawing 70% of its uh, electricity from uh, nuclear uh, energy. And still, uh, this is a country that is uh, uh, heavily uh, invested uh, in uh, international uh, cooperation in this area. Uh, we are strong believers uh, and, uh, I mean, extremely committed uh, to uh, the NPT. Uh, and we take uh, an all-compassing approach to the NPT between its uh, different uh, pillars. Uh, uh, and uh, we uh, stress uh, the importance uh, of uh, the approach to uh, the NPT uh, being uh, balanced. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the third pillar in that context, uh, which we deal with here uh, in Vienna, uh, is uh, ex extremely important to us. And uh, it's a very good opportunity today and to cast light 
uh, on it, to cast light on what is done under it, and to also cast light uh, on the prospect for uh, further uh, advancing uh, the uh, opportunities, uh, the uh, corporations, the initiatives uh, under the, the third pillar of uh, the, the NPT. Uh, maybe uh, third, I, I should highlight uh, a couple of uh, examples uh, of uh, what uh, can be achieved because uh, there is a tendency uh, to consider uh, when thinking of the third pillar of the NPT, uh, that is it's uh, essentially uh, or primarily uh, nuclear uh, energy. And uh, actually uh, it is uh, a fact here also that the uh, the other uh, peaceful uses of nuclear uh, energy, the other uh, peaceful uh, applications, uh, the other peaceful uh, technologies uh, are, uh, I mean, are extremely uh, important, and uh, that it's very uh, relevant uh, to uh, uh, bring uh, more uh, attention uh, there. Um, it's uh, 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 when we, we deal with uh, uh, with uh, those uh, nuclear technologies, uh, do we uh, are we uh, aware enough uh, beyond uh, the tiny world of Vienna specialists and the tiny world uh, of uh, uh, experts scientists uh, in uh, respective uh, countries uh, that uh, it's also uh, about, for instance, uh, finding ways. And to, uh, uh, to 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 fight uh, pests uh, and therefore uh, protect uh, crops, uh, protect uh, human health uh, by uh, developing uh, techniques like the uh, sterile in, uh, insect uh, technique uh, that is extremely useful for uh, agriculture and for uh, human health. Are we uh, aware enough and uh, are uh, our uh, compatriots, uh, all of them, aware enough uh, that uh, it's uh, health, uh, also in the sense that uh, it's uh, the fight against uh, cancer, and the um, fight against uh, zoonotic uh, diseases. Are we aware that uh, there are also opportunities, uh, thanks to uh, such techniques, uh, to protect uh, our uh, cultural uh, heritage, to fight uh, trafficking uh, in uh, antiquities uh, to uh, uh, take advantage of non-invasive uh, techniques uh, that uh, help uh, trace the uh, origins uh, of uh, masterpieces or uh, archaeological uh, artifacts. So these are the areas uh, where uh, more uh, attention actually uh, needs to be uh, put. Um, now, uh, fourth. Uh, and maybe I will uh, stop uh, thereafter and uh, to uh, leave uh, more time for uh, our uh, interactive uh, engagement. Uh, what approach uh, do uh, we uh, take to that? Um, it's uh, I mean, important not only uh, to uh, showcase uh, results and to uh, illustrate and the use of uh, technologies, uh, but uh, also to um, uh, ensure uh, in in the real world, in in very concrete terms, uh, that the, the the peaceful uses uh, can be uh, more uh, spread uh, to uh, the users uh, in uh, the countries that are signatories to the NPT, and that they can uh, draw uh, benefits from that. And uh, it's not. Uh, only uh, the state uh, to state cooperation uh, it's uh, also uh, the the, the uh, uh, peaceful uses that we can make more available uh, to uh, the uh, end, end users uh, may uh, it be uh, the the patients uh, benefiting uh, from uh, nuclear uh, techniques uh, to uh, detect or diagnose uh, or uh, treat uh, cancer or uh, communities scientists, uh, law enforcement authorities uh, in uh, some uh, instances, and that we can uh, facilitate uh, the uh, advancement uh, of uh, very noble uh, causes uh, by uh, making 
such uh, technologies more available, uh, more easily available uh, to uh, those uh, end users. And to conclude, uh, what I would like to stress uh, is, uh, I mean, the, the uh, I mean, high importance uh, that we attach uh, to uh, the uh, NPT uh, review conference uh, for uh, that purpose. Uh, it's uh, a pity uh, that uh, it had to be uh, postponed. We look forward uh, to uh, having it uh, in any case uh, next year uh, in 2021. Uh, it's uh, a very uh, important uh, moment to, to take stock uh, of uh, the, the progress because, after all, uh, we have that opportunity uh, every uh, five years and uh, it, it has uh, to come uh, in, in, the, in the year ahead. Uh, at the same time, uh, the, the, everything that we do and the projects on which we work and the uh, uh, initiatives uh, on which we, we work and we, we work collectively uh, on a number of, of them and they have a, 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 a medium uh, to long-term time frame and it's very important for us uh, to stay the course and to keep uh, working on that uh, with uh, uh, because uh, when uh, the uh, revcon uh, recesses that work actually has to to continue and we have to to plan uh, for an horizon and that goes uh, way beyond uh, the revcon and keep uh, feeding our uh, our uh, agenda uh, with uh, new uh, projects uh, of uh, of the sort of, of the sort. So this is the approach uh, that uh, we take, and uh, uh, you, you have uh, highlighted, Mr. Haute uh, Couverture, uh, how uh, diverse uh, we are. Uh, a set of uh, countries between uh, Jordan, uh, Japan, and uh, France. Uh, but uh, I would like again to to emphasize how we uh, cooperate uh, here, how we uh, cooperate uh, on a country-to-country -country, uh, basis uh, through uh, not only our atomic energy uh, agencies or uh, our governments, but it's also our scientists, our uh, 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 relevant uh, stake stakeholders, uh, and um, uh, it's uh, the, the 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 way uh, we can uh, make uh, progress and and fulfill uh, the pledges. Uh, and uh, of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the NPT, and in that respect, uh, I, I, I feel quite uh, encouraged, and, and, and uh, I'm uh, really uh, convinced uh, that uh, it is uh, uh, a relevant framework under which we have done uh, a tremendous uh, work and uh, got uh, already a very good success. But we have to stay the course. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you very much for this vision, which rem reminds indeed us uh, that the civil applications of nuclear energy go beyond the generation of electricity, and that these applications nourish, fuel our uh, daily life, which is indeed an often overlooked emergent of, of the NPT uh, review process. Uh, and, and, and again, thank you for insisting on uh, these uh, collective aspects of the civil dimension of, of nuclear uses. Madame uh, l'ambassadeur Al-Hadid, uh, on behalf of uh, Jordan, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I hope. Right. Um, well, thank you so much, and it's a great honor for me here to be here um, and participate in this uh, fourth w uh, webinar, as you as you mentioned already, and to be here with my colleagues, who we see um, colleagues from France and J and Japan, who we see almost on a daily basis um, here at the UN. Um, it's a bit like going a school and seeing your classmates every day and it's a it's a great relationship that helps um, us achieve our collective goals now um, 
This event is taking place at a time where we're all facing an unprecedented threat, which is the COVID-19 pandemic. And we've seen many conferences and meetings being postponed, the NPT being one of them, of course. Um, we're expecting NPT to take place um, uh, last year in uh, May. Um, now it seems, and, and then it was postponed till January. Now it seems that it's going to be perhaps held in August 2021. Um, now, where does Vienna come in to all of this? I'm not particularly surprised that you've you've focused your your attention on Vienna, um, which is on the third pillar, and brought in the Vienna perspective. Nuclear diplomacy worldwide, I think, has faced it has had a fair share of challenges this past year. We've seen withdrawals from treaties and agreements. Um, but I think, as Ambassador Sticker rightly mentioned, keeping the course, I think Vienna has kept the course. We've stayed focused on the peaceful uses. Um, um, Vienna is home to the to great institutions such as the IAA and the CTBTO, and they deal with non-proliferation, peaceful uses, and ensure the highest standards of safe security and safeguards. Now, we've been seeing also that the demands for energy continues to grow for many countries. Um, of course, with that growth, there is a need to constantly upgrade uh, and find the appropriate legal and regulatory framework that continue to develop accordingly. But what does that growth really mean? What does it mean for us on the ground? Uh, practice has proven that nuclear technology benefits uh, and the benefits that it has uh, to the economic growth and development is there. Let me give you Jordan's example, and you spoke about Jordan very briefly before. Um, Jordan is a middle-income country, overburdened with crisis after crisis in the region, um, a lot of regional instability. Um, so we focus not only on security issues, but also on developmental ones. Um, we have very little water. We used to be one of the top three poorest countries in terms of water resource. We've jumped up with the refugee situation in Jordan and become the top three poorest country in the world um, for water. Um, so we've come up with, uh, with through with the work of the IEA as well, um, which has which does incredible work on on this uh, scarce resource. Um, nuclear techniques are used to help maintain the healthy soil and water systems, and that has a direct impact on people on the ground. Um, as does the uh, agricultural practices that involve nuclear technology, and we must uh, raise our hat off to. The work that the IEA does in both of these fields and the expertise they've managed to gain over the past 50 years in that regard, all with the goal of reaching the SDGs or the Sustainable Development Goals in 2030. Um, now, going back to the example of Jordan, we've been working on developing nuclear energy for peaceful uses since 2007. You've already mentioned that. And in 2016, we inaugurated the Jordan Research and Training Reactor. Uh, one of the platform that increases capacities and capabilities to support peaceful uses of nuclear energy. And the Commission, uh, the Jordan Com Energy Commission, does incredible work with the IEA and we're continuing to develop uh, and moving forward in that regard, especially when it comes to capacity building. Scale, and I always like to mention this because this is something that's not mentioned enough in the world. Jordan hosts the Sesame International Center for Scientific Research, which was inaugurated in 2017. It's a competitive uh, synchrotron light source and the first of its kind in the Middle East, CERN being one of them that represents in, that's in, in Europe. And now this Sesame International Center is a great achievement for, for two reasons. First, in terms of science, and the second, in terms of international relations, it's a confidence building um, measure that, that we've taken on. In 2017, when it was inaugurated, everybody was there. Um, the Israelis were there, the Iranians were there, everybody in the region was there to inaugurate it because we understood the importance of science and the impact it has on people's daily lives. Um, so the center's international reach can build bridges in the region through cooperation in the field of science, as I've just mentioned. Um, and the world needs that. Uh, and we foster, foster mutual understanding and tolerance, which the world really needs, and which the IEA also does. Um, 
Back uh, now to the peaceful use of the IEA, just recently, um, um, many countries benefited from one of the nuclear derived methods, which is called the diagnostic kits provided by the IEA, essentially for detecting, tracking and studying the virus that ca causes COVID-19 disease. Again, another example of the great work that the IEA does at a time when the whole world was paralyzed, the IEA came up with these um, uh, uh, kits and distributed them to the rest of the world when most of the planes were grounded and made sure that it provided these countries with these kits to study the COVID-19 disease. Um, and the medical activities that the IA does is also important, also to change the mindset of people about the good uses of nuclear and nuclear technology. And most recently, I think I should mention the uh, Zoonotic Disease Integrated Action there, which is called the Zodiac Initiative that the IA is working on. Um, and it detects and prevents control of outbreaks. And if that uh, project is up and running, it's another great example of effective nuclear techniques and methods and cooperation worldwide. Um, so the, the, the number of technical cooperation programs and initiatives reflects growing importance of key sectors in the nuclear field, including nuclear security. And here I say because both go hand in hand. You cannot have peaceful uses of nuclear energy and have development and speak about development on one issue on one hand without speaking about nuclear security. And it, when it came to nuclear secu security in particular, I can't but mention uh, with great gratitude, the work that France did with Jordan on this. Um, they supported our Jean de Marie, they supported our, you know, they built up the capacity to be able to detect, um, because, because these are people who don't understand what nuclear energy really does, what does it mean? And in a region where we are constant, we're in a very unstable, unstable region where um, the threat of terrorism is always, you know, there looming somewhere, I think the upgrade of our uh, national authorities, and in particular the uh, forces, the police forces, um, to detect these nuclear threats were, was very relevant. And this is where France came in um, strong, in, in addition to already existing cooperation in the field of electricity production and desalination of seawater. Um, Japan, also a great, a great contributor and supporter of the IAEA and of Jordan on nuclear uh, security and peaceful uses through agreements that we've signed as well, which enables countries to exchange nuclear materials and proven technology in compliance with international standards. Also, in accordance to the NPT as well, this is one of the, one of the requests of the NPT, the rights of uh, all countries to attain, to have their uh, the ability to attain uh, nuclear power, nuclear energy through peaceful uses. So these are joint cooperation and partnerships based on shared values. And I think it's important to underline them constantly because this is a constant work in process um, in terms of cooperation. And it, it, it helps with the whole global nuclear security architecture. And of course, um, uh, continues to allow countries to use these, uh, this, this technology in a peaceful manner. Um, on the NPT, I think, because I, I know that this is just dedicated to the peaceful uses, but I cannot accept mention, of course, the Middle East weapons of mass destruction free zone, what is called the Middle East, and our hope to one day achieve that. Um, and then we, in Jordan, we strongly believe that the, the sciences of it, the scientific part of it, can help the confidence building and reduce tension, lead to security and stability in the Middle East. And we will always... Um, uh, hope for that to one that one day all the parties will sit around the table, um, and we tried that with the last Middle East conference that was held in 2019 in November in New York, um, and of course where there was a political declaration, it was a really constructive meeting. A final report that came out based on arrangements freely arrived at. We always say that by all states of the region, freely arrived at, meaning that come have a dialogue, sit with us, talk to us, let's discuss this. Um, now the next meeting of this Middle East uh, Peace Conference, uh, Middle East uh, uh, Conference, we don't know when it will be depending on the NPT. Um, um, now, um, I have to mention the CTBT a little bit of what it does and the verification that it does because it's part of the Vienna scene. Um, we're in the process of electing an executive secretary, um, but Jordan's hosted an integra integrated field exercise that was in 2014. Um, it's one of the largest field activities that the PrepCom has um, done. 
and it, it we were hoping that it would be another initiative that would allow the CTBT to enter, to enter into force. Um, we've seen late, lately that the ban treaty that TP and W has entered into force or and, and will in January 22nd be a full-fledged um, treaty and an instrument. It seems a real shame that the CTBT has not entered into force, even though it's still a PrepCom, even though we've been working with the CTB so closely, closely it does amazing work on um, verification and monitoring as well. Now, my final words is that we need a, a, a healthy ecosystem worldwide. And this everything that we're talking about peaceful uses is part of it. Um, water, energy, and food security cannot be disentangled from one another, nor can peaceful uses of nuclear energy, nuclear security, and the multilateral approach that Ambassador Sticker just spoke about. I think history has shown that hard security alone never works. Um, we're, we're always clearly speaking about that as Jordan. A much broader concept of human security can prevent and de-escalate conflicts. Um, uh, but it must be stated here that only through the interconnection and mutual reinforcement of the NPT's three pillars, the three pillars together, um, can, can we accelerate and enlarge the contribution of atomic energy to peace, health and prosperity throughout the world. No pillar alone can carry the others. No pillar alone will be enough. And we hope that the three will be as important and looked at um, in, in, uh, in an appropriate manner in the next NPT conference. And I think I'll stop there. But thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much, Madame uh, Lambassadeur. Thank you very much for your uh, very uh, uh, thorough and uh, diverse points. You, uh, as, as Ambassador Sticker, you, you, you stress the concrete effects of several applications on the daily life of countries developing nuclear energy and the field uh, collaboration that this activity implies at regional and, and uh, at international level, and in particular, the ongoing COVID-19 uh, pandemic around the world has been uh, a recent illustration. We have all witnessed that of the usefulness of the IAEA and the civil applications of nuclear energy in a very concrete uh, uh, case. You have also mentioned the need for safe and secure developments to give uh, full value to civil uh, applications and indeed they go hand in hand as you said and you mentioned uh, the importance of an international security architecture like the one we we we, we have uh, we have uh, seen uh, since uh, the beginning of uh, this century and uh, particularly between 2010 2016 where the political momentum was very high and you, you uh, also mentioned the issue of the WND for example, in the Middle East, uh, which, by the way, is, is a question on, on which I have personally very much worked in the, in the framework of the EU non proliferation and disarmament consortium since 2010 to 2012. And, and with the hope that that work on this fine objective uh, will be resumed, this is a more, of course, as we all know, controversial issue for many of the states parties to the treaty, but it is sure uh, to be of interest uh, uh, to uh, to us all. So um, thank you very much for your contribution. And uh, now we will uh, hear uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Ambassador Ikiara on behalf of Japan. Uh, Monsieur Ambassador, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chair or Mr. Moderator. Uh, can you hear me? No problem? Okay, thank you so much. Um, first, let me express my sincere gratitude to uh, you, uh, Mr. Benjamin Otgubekchuk, and uh, Foundation for the Strategic, uh, for giving me the opportunity to speak at this uh, webinar on the issue of the importance of this nuclear energy. And I'm very happy to join this important occasion together with my dear uh, friends, Dina and Xavier. 
Promotion of the peaceful uses of nuclear energy is important as one of the three pillars of the NPT, along with the two other pillars, uh, disarmament and non-proliferation. However, the promotion of peaceful uses of nuclear energy has not always drawn proper attention uh, in the context of the discussion related to the NPT. I think a successful outcome of the NPT review conference will only be possible when we recognize the value of the promotion of the peaceful uses and when we recognize the three pillars reinforce each other. So let me begin uh, with why and how uh, Japan has been promoting the peaceful uses of nuclear energy. Uh, in fact, Japan has got a long history of nuclear science. Uh, the first Japanese Nobel laureate was a theoretical physicist, uh, physicist called Yukawa Hideki who predicted the existence of Mizun in the 1930s. And after World War II, Japan took advantage of the peaceful uses of nuclear energy in its own development and economic growth. The nuclear energy and its applications contribute to development in various fields, including health, agriculture, and the environment, and thus help to address global issues and achieve the uh, sustainable development goals. Japan has benefited from the peaceful uses of nuclear energy in its own development. And as Japan strongly advocates for the SDGs, promoting the peaceful uses of nuclear energy is a logical course of action for us. The ongoing global fight against COVID-19 illustrates once again how the peaceful uses of nuclear energy uh, or nuclear-related technology operate in fulfilling basic needs of development I'm happy to uh, hear uh, that Lina touched on the important concept. Actually, the human uh, security is a concept which includes the right of people to live in freedom and dignity and calls for people-centered responses that strengthen the protection and the empowerment of all people and for the communities. Japan has been committed to promote uh, this notion of human security already for two decades. Now the spread of the coronavirus is posing a threat to uh, the, our lives, livelihoods, and the dignity of people across the globe. Uh, it is a threat to human security. And the uh, IAEA has uh, reacted quickly to respond, uh, to extend its support. I believe the, that the agency has shown the relevance of its work through the peaceful uses of nuclear technology. Uh, in his speech at the UN General Assembly, Prime Minister Suga touched upon the principle of uh, leaving no one's health behind as a guiding principle to overcome, the, overcome this crisis. The work being done by the agency embodies this principle. I hope that uh, through our joint endeavor uh, to fight against the pandemic, the wider and deeper understanding of the benefit of nuclear technology will at the moment. Now let me talk about Japan's effort in the context of the IAEA. Uh, Japan has been uh, substantially supporting various IAEA activities in the field of peaceful uses of nuclear energy in terms of financial, technical, and human resources. Japan's contribution to the Peaceful Use Initiative, or PUI, is one of its highlights. Our contribution amounts to 38 million euros and support for 86 projects since 2011, the year when Japan first joined the IPU. Our projects include a controlling population of mosquito diseases vector, disease vectors in Asia Pacific, improving fertilization practices in crops in Latin America, or diagnosis of zoonotic diseases in Africa. These projects materialize the benefit of the peaceful uses in various development sectors, including health agriculture and food. On top of these efforts, in the context of the uh, current fight against the diseases, Japan highly appreciates the uh, initiative of Director General Rafael Grossi for the Zoonotic Disease Integrated Action, or the Zodiac Initiative, which helps uh, countries prevent pandemics caused by bacteria, a parasites, or uh, a viruses that originates in animals can be 
is on the IAE's calendar for the fight against COVID-19. Japan expects that the agency will continue to play an active role in responding to zoonotic diseases in the future. And for assisting the IAE's effort, the Japanese government uh, has allocated 1 million euro to the PUI to be used uh, for the fight against COVID-19 and in line with Georgia. So in addition to these regional or issue-specific projects, Japan is also continuously supporting the IAEA through the renewal project. Modernizing the IAEA's very important asset, cyber as well for laboratories, enhance the activities of the IAEA, which is the only international organization with a mandate on the peaceful uses of nuclear energy. Here, I should stress the cooperation with the private sector strengthen the effectiveness of our support. One part of our renewal project is in enhancing capacity for rapid response to food safety emergencies. The main apparatus used for food analysis uh, has been donated by Shimas Corporation, which is a major manufacturer of analytical instruments in Japan. And related to the IAEA's support for the measures against COVID-19, Takeda Pharmaceutical Company of Japan also extended its financial support of 4.3 million euros to the IAEA. Resources and the technologies from the private sector make it possible to realize these supports, which could not be achieved otherwise in terms of their size, speed, and comfort. So Japan will continue to proactively support the peaceful uses of nuclear energy in cooperation with the IAEA, member states, and the relevant stakeholders, including the private sector. Uh, before concluding, uh, let me share some of my thoughts on how we should see common ground among the parties to the NPT in relation to the peaceful uses of nuclear uh, energy. As for the linkage between the non-proliferation and the peaceful uses of nuclear energy, we should all share our view that the peaceful use of our nuclear energy will be promoted by proper functioning of the nuclear non-proliferation regime, which facilitates technical cooperation among the states. This view is based on our own experiences, uh, because today, Japan accepts the biggest portion of IAEA safeguard activities and spare no effort to prove that the uses of nuclear energy in Japan remains exclusively for peaceful purposes. In our development cooperation, as uh, just like mentioned by Lina, uh, in peaceful uses of nuclear energy, we also confirm first, before embarking on the, the process of the cooperation, that the recipient country has an additional protocol in effect. We also take into account the overall situation in each individual cases, uh, including factors such as non-proliferation or nuclear policy. Only after these considerations, we can start the discussions for a bilateral agreement for cooperation in the peaceful use of nuclear energy. So our bilateral uh, uh, arrangement itself is another instrument for ensuring non-divergence. In this way, uh, the peaceful uses of nuclear energy can be promoted with confidence as non proliferation is firmly ensured. And when it comes to the disarmament and the peaceful uses of nuclear energy, uh, as far as I know, there are not many discussions on their mutual relations. However, for instance, the UNODA pointed out that the advancement of disarmament and the arms uh, control objective who will support the achievement of other SDGs from good health and quality education to gender equality, economic growth, reduced inequalities, and safe cities. Likewise, as the IAEA is working in line with Atoms for Peace and Development, we should use the nuclear energy for achieving the SDGs by 2030, which will also mark the 60th anniversary of the NPT. So uh, those viewpoints, in a uh, broader context of SDGs, might be useful for further uh, discussion uh, toward the NPT review conference. Lastly, uh, allow me to briefly touch upon nuclear safety and security as an enabler of the peaceful uses of nuclear energy. Last month, the IAEA and the government of Malaysia signed an agreement 
to establish a pool of radiation uh, detection equipment to support nuclear security training and uh, detection capacity building in the Asia Pacific region. This is the first nuclear security equipment depository facilitated by the IAEA, and Japan contributed to the financing for this project. We hope this arrangement will set a good precedent for other regions. It is our sincere hope that uh, through implementation of uh, various successful projects, one and more countries will regard nuclear safety and security along with nuclear safety as an enabler of the peaceful use of nuclear energy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for enlightening us on, on Japan's contribution to the development of, of civil applications of nuclear energy. This is one of the most important contributions in the world, as we all know, which gives Japan particular role, maybe particular weight in, in the review process on, uh, on this topic. Mr. Ambassador, I also note that like uh, your Jordanian counterpart just before, you mentioned, you both mentioned the concept of human security. It is indeed the beautiful notion that speaks to everyone, I think, even if it can be on certain levels tricky, let's say that, tricky to define for scholars at the uh, academic level, I would say. But this is not the case in terms of civil applications where this notion is uh, perfectly uh, operative indeed. So we can now give the floor to our audience for, uh, let's say, 20 to 25 minute sessions of questions and comments on uh, our topic. So I, I, I leave the floor open to all of you and, and, and to, uh, to our entire audience. Just this uh, uh, point, I suggest you ask your questions using the Q&A tool uh, that appears at the, at the bottom right of your screen and ask uh, please ask your questions to all panelists and I will uh, relay orally uh, your, your questions. So um, maybe let's, uh, let's have a look. At, at the moment, we do not have a, a question. Uh, we, we, uh, often have to wait for some time for people to think about a question they would like to ask. And uh, in the meantime, I, I myself would uh, easily launch our debate with uh, this, uh, this very open question, which, which is linked with the uh, 50th anniversary of the entry into force of our treaty. My question would be, uh, do you think that issues related to, uh, to civil uses have received the, the attention they deserve in the NPT process over the past 50 years? My experience of this review process dates uh, the 2000 REFCON, and which means 20 years ago now. And one uh, can get the impression, I, I think I can share this impression with many colleagues, that the review process has always been monopolized by the uh, age-old issue of the linkage between non-proliferation and disarmament which has been, to some extent, very dynamic in the past, but uh, which is also a highly politicized issue. And for instance, I, I, I 
I have a good illustration of that. I think the 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 latest review conference, the 2015 review conference, has generally been remembered, been perceived as a failure, political failure, a diplomatic failure, a strategic failure, while the review of the issues under the peaceful uses pillar was very fruitful and was perceived as such by many participants, by many uh, states. I remember the I remember the, the, the permanent representative of the Netherlands uh, uh, being uh, absolutely pleased with the results of this pillar in 2015, and nobody heard about it at uh, the, in the general debate. So, so do you think these issues receive the attention they deserve in the NPT review process? And 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 if it's not the case, what 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 could be done to uh, I don't know to foster that debate to uh, in in a positive way something like that maybe who 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 would like to comment to give some comments on that Ambassador Sticker. Thank you, uh, Mr. Haute Couture, for your uh, question, which is a very uh, rich one, and uh, as uh, you were. Uh, uh, elaborating and developing your thoughts, um, I was thinking that uh, uh, we take more and more ownership uh, of uh, the third pillar uh, in that balanced uh, approach to the NPT and to its uh, three uh, pillars. Um, why is it so? Well, I would like to articulate my response around uh, three uh, keywords: uh, relevance, uh, inclusivity, and creativity. Relevance, and because if we start with examples and the uh, choice of the energy mix lies with the countries, with the nation states, and, uh, and there are different uh, trends uh, between those who rebalance and their energy mix, those who grow and their uh, uh, use of, uh, of uh, nuclear energy, those uh, that bring down uh, their, uh, uh, their uh, or uh, get out of nuclear energy. But uh, most uh, NPT uh, countries are signatories to the Paris uh, Agreement, and they have commitments uh, under that, and they have uh, uh, visions uh, for uh, decarbonation. And uh, I remember uh, the uh, IAEA Director General uh, being quoted uh, last week and uh, saying that uh, by 2030, uh, there would be at least a dozen uh, more uh, newcomers and to uh, nuclear uh, energy for uh, electricity uh, production. And um, uh, uh, what uh, DG Grossi uh, keeps uh, stressing is that uh, nuclear uh, energy is, is there as part of the conversation uh, for uh, the uh, climate goals. And definitely, this is a conversation uh, that uh, hadn't uh, started uh, or uh, hadn't been uh, completed uh, by uh, the time uh, the previous uh, review conference uh, convened. Inclusivity. Inclusivity uh, because uh, probably uh, the uh, immediate interpretation of the third pillar uh, is, is a narrow uh, interpretation uh, of it. Uh, as I said, it's uh, primarily for most people nuclear uh, energy. Uh, but even if I stay uh, with uh, nuclear uh, energy production, nuclear safety, nuclear uh, security, uh, to uh, a significant uh, part of it, are also part of that uh, third pillar. And uh, take uh, an example, for instance, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, fighting. Uh, 
something that uh, Lina El Hadid, Ambassador El Hadid, uh, alluded to, which is the, the, the risk uh, deriving from terrorism. And this is an area, for instance, where uh, France uh, is uh, eager to cooperate with uh, interested countries, and we have uh, bilateral cooperations or uh, um, uh, uh, or cooperation with uh, regional uh, partners uh, in in the Sahel, for instance, uh, for the the the, the security. Uh, of uh, major sports or uh, political events, uh, where uh, we we have to uh, to 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 to, uh, to to avert uh, the risk uh, of uh, terrorism, which is uh, uh, an, a rather uh, emerging uh, risks uh, in comparison to the days, the early, very early days uh, of uh, the NPT. Uh, and the the last uh, key word was uh, creativity. Um, Creativity, because uh, probably a, a narrow uh, interpretation uh, of uh, the third pillar would be to focus uh, on the uh, IAEA technical cooperation, uh, which is uh, an 80 million uh, euro uh, per year uh, pot of money. Um, but actually, uh, what we can achieve, what we work on, what we cooperate uh, on, and, and the, the, the even the financial basis on which we, we have uh, such a cooperation is, is much broader, broader than that. And uh, what we are uh, not only witnessing, but also contributing to now uh, is how to, to involve uh, other uh, uh, sorts of, uh, of, uh, of contributors and other forms of uh, contributions. Um, I, for instance, think uh, of the, the PACT program by uh, IAEA, uh, that is a, a program on uh, cancer uh, with an emphasis on Africa, with an emphasis um, uh, also on, on the, the, the cancer uh, affecting uh, women. And for that purpose, IAEA is cooperating with the Islamic Development Bank uh, to uh, work on the basis not only of, uh, of uh, grants, but also loans. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the, the sort of initiatives that uh, needs uh, to keep uh, growing. And uh, as as far as France is concerned, uh, we uh, are uh, actually looking at uh, the uh, uh, involvement uh, of uh, uh, in, uh, contributors uh, that are uh, beyond uh, the uh, resources of the state or uh, its uh, administrative uh, bodies or, or uh, entities. And I think that uh, there is a trend there, uh, and we, we, we are uh, I mean, quite optimistic uh, to see that uh, growing. And, and, and therefore, on the basis of your question, my, my message is, is one of uh, hope and, uh, and optimism, and not uh, regretting uh, that uh, uh, the, the third pillar would have been uh, too neglected, but uh, of uh, looking to the future, to the present and the future, and observing that it is more relevant, uh, that uh, and there is more uh, inclusivity uh, in the approach uh, that we uh, take to it, and that we can be uh, more creative uh, and are working on being more uh, innovative uh, in the way uh, we can uh, spread uh, the peaceful uses of uh, nuclear uh, energy and nuclear technologies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ambassador Hadi, would you like to add something on this point? Um, yes, thank you for that. Um, I think when we look at the NPT, um, we look at it independently of the ups and downs that it's gone through over the years. Um, uh, what is a success or a failure of the NPT? I think we need to define that first. Um, it, it, there seems uh, a view that um, if there's an outcome document, then it's a success. But I think you pointed out something extremely important, uh, the 2015. Um, on, on the issues and the agreements within the, about the safeguards within the NPT, nobody highlights that. Um, and it's it's maybe it's not as interesting as or exciting as talking about disarmament as talking about risk reduction um this is something where when it comes to uh for example 
um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, we've seen the damage it can do. We've seen the devastation it can do. Um, within the peaceful uses, maybe the, the you know, in some ways, uh, uh, maybe ambassadors in Vienna and those permanent representatives who are accredited to the IEA and IEA itself, maybe we just don't do enough to, to advertise what the peaceful uses does uh, and how it impacts positively the lives of uh, people in, in every day. Um, maybe there, maybe there, there's another way to go about it. Um, but I think the idea of uh, adopting a consensus document in itself as being uh, a criteria for a success of the NPT in itself, I think in, in doing that we undermine this incredible instrument and, and we do that I think more easily than we should. We shouldn't. We should not be um, going down that direction. Uh, it's an important instrument. Uh, we've had nine review conferences. How many of them have had outcome uh, documents? Not many. I think four in total have had an outcome document. So we shouldn't focus too much on. In, 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 collectively, we should try and avoid this discussion of what is a failure and what is a success of the NPT. Um, and I think I think that's the message that I have today. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay, very good. And I, 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 I personally very agree, very much agree on, on, on what you have just said, and particularly on, on the concept of uh, success and failure of a REVCON. Um, Ambassador Ikiaha. Would you like to add something on these uh, on the importance of this pillar in the review process of the NPT? Mm -hmm. If you can hear us and if you can, yes, yes, okay, good. Okay. Please, please. Okay, can can you hear me? Hello. Actually, actually, there is an echo, but we can hear you very well. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure if you can uh, hear well, but uh, I, I will go. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a very interesting and fundamental question for all of us. How the uh, peaceful uses of nuclear energy relates to the success of the coming review conference. Uh, I myself uh, also uh, personally uh, engaged to the, the last review conference uh, uh, that the chair mentioned in 2015, and which is in general, remembered unfortunately as a failure. But all that we remember uh, at first hand of, out of this uh, last review conference is a discussion uh, around, surrounding the uh, nuclear disarmament, especially the uh, Middle East nuclear free zone. Uh, and of course, the discussion around the uh, new peaceful uses has been very successful. But toward the end of the conference, uh, very frankly speaking, Nobody really didn't remember what kind of role actually this will use this uh, function in the, the final moments of the uh, conference of the, of the last time. The, the five years experience, and especially the current juncture of COVID-19, remind us uh, of the, the importance of the, the stake that the uh, peaceful uses of nuclear energy can bear. Uh, and in that, I really love the expression uh, of uh, uh, Lina, and I think uh, the Xavier, uh, of the ownership uh, of the peaceful uses of nuclear energy of a wider range of stakeholders, including, of course, member states. Now the people, I mean, the member states and the people, are the stakeholders, feel uh, stronger than perhaps five years ago of the importance and uh, this enormous uh, potential uh, uh, benefit that nuclear energy can bring about to us, and that the uh, sound functioning of the NPT, including its uh, safeguard system and the security and uh, safety measures, are an uh, enabler uh, for the further strengthening of cooperation in this field. So through this experience, especially the experience of this pandemic situation, uh, people can hopefully uh, be more motivated to uh, keep this NPT alive together with all three pillars, because uh, before the NPT to be alive in a sound manner, all the three pillars are more, uh, all the three pillars are equally important. So 
so that this uh, more eminent, larger merit that peaceful uses of nuclear energy bring about to us can motivate the people to engage, perhaps uh, hopefully stronger than five years ago, uh, how do we uh, find a, a consensus for the future of the NPT? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, well, it seems that. <laughs> uh, there, uh, we we can't hear you. Uh, well, it it seems that our audience has uh, decided to remain silent. Uh, well, it's good that the three of you have answered all the questions that each uh, of you had uh, when you arrived. I maybe ask if you agree. And, and, and before closing our session, because we we're, were we're close to, to the end of it, and last question about nuclear security in particular. It's a specific question. The three of you talked about nuclear security, I guess. Ambassador Aladid mentioned the international architecture of the matter. Would you say that international work on this issue is still progressing uh, at a good pace, let's say? since the end of the nuclear security summits in 2016, maybe despite uh, 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 not, not a lack of, 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 uh, of, uh, of a high level political interest, but maybe a decrease in, in, in the momentum, which is part of perfectly normal, I, I, I mean. But what, what, what would you say? Uh, what, how would you qualify the, 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 the political, uh, uh, the uh, operational uh, involvement uh, initiatives on uh, nuclear security as far as it belongs to the, 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 the this uh, third pillar on, on, on peaceful uses uh, at the moment and, and a, a, few, a few weeks a few months uh, ahead of, of the of the Revcon what is there someone who would like to give us some yes on the set of sticker, please? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Couverture, for uh, raising the, that. Uh, I think that uh, there has been an, an evolution uh, when it comes to uh, nuclear uh, security, uh, and actually uh, within the uh, IAEA uh, membership. Uh, it has been for a long time uh, contained to, within the remit uh, of uh, uh, the, the physical protection uh, of uh, facilities uh, and the uh, well, evolution uh, of uh, the, the concept of uh, nuclear security leaves us now or leads us now uh, to being uh, more uh, and more uh, alert and to, uh, to the other dimensions of uh, nuclear uh, security. And uh, indeed, uh, the, the terrorist threat um, is uh, more and more uh, included uh, in, uh, in, in this uh, area. And it, it's, it's an area where the, 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 the opportunities for uh, international cooperation uh, based uh, on uh, also, I mean, with also uh, IAEA uh, being active, but uh, this is also uh, an area where uh, sovereign nations uh, cooperate, uh, and uh, we are uh, doing that uh, that uh, more and more. Okay, good. Thank you, Ambassador Sticker. Uh, Ambassador Hadid. You, you mentioned this uh, international architecture on nuclear security. Would like to to be maybe more specific about it. Um, yes, thank you very much. Um, when the nuclear security summits first came up, it was a new issue. It was a new, um, and then slowly, slowly, this started to to the nuclear security issue started to go through um, the IAEA and the work of the IAEA. Um, now, the struggle, I must say, at the beginning um, was a funding. 
um, there was a lot of concern within countries of the G77 or the developing uh, countries that where would the money that was going to be allocated for nuclear security come from? And would it be taken away from technical cooperation? Um, you know, the, the budgeting issue was all, always something and it continues to some degree today. But the political mood in general, I'd say, there's a lot more acceptance of the importance of the nuclear security as part of the whole architecture. Um, nuclear terrorism in itself is not specifically um, addressed in the treaty, of course, of the, uh, of the NPT, but it certainly has a bearing on the issue and it has a bearing on global security. And, and although countries understand that and understand the importance of it, um, uh, there is an issue of the funding um, and there's always a concern and the struggle uh, between what projects can be funded and if the money is going to be taken more for the nuclear security aspect, including uh, the, 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 the work of the IA and so on. So this is an ongoing discussion that goes on um, year in, year out. But in general, I'd say there's certainly more acceptance of it than there was a few years ago, where, the, where we saw clearly some countries um, resisting it in the strongest way possible, but not, not as much anymore. So just to leave it at that. Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for the good news then. Uh, Ambassador Ikiaha, you would like to have the floor, please. Oh, what do you mean? Uh, sadly, and there is. Yes. Can you hear me? Sorry, I don't know. Okay, I, I will continue. Yes. Of course, the nuclear security issue has started as a, a high-level political initiative, and we went through the four rounds of uh, heads of state meetings. Uh, but uh, I, since after that, this February, I had a chance to participate in the ICONS meeting, where uh, not maybe the heads of states, but uh, uh, all, those, all those who are directly responsible for the nuclear security issue, now including or the practitioners on the ground got together in Vienna and discussed about the concrete uh, issues on nuclear security. And I was really impressed by the degree of engagement of these participants who actually uh, practice uh, the nuclear security on the ground. So it's uh, another uh, uh, proof that this relatively new notion has taken a very good root uh, on the ground and that uh, it, it has become already a part of our nuclear uh, discussion on nuclear practice uh, to promote the peaceful use of nuclear energy. Of course, we have got a, a, a financial problem, how to allocate uh, the, uh, the limited resources to nuclear safety or the nuclear security, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, uh, at least compared to the, uh, the when we started uh, politically the discussion of nuclear security, this concept and our practice on the ground have, uh, take good root uh, in our uh, uh, nuclear uh, thinking. Thank you, Chair. Merci beaucoup, Ambassador Ikiara. Uh, well, it's uh, four seventeen, so I think it's time to for us to 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 close maybe with these last words because our uh, webinars uh, are designed to be uh, pretty uh, short and specific and concise and uh, it's now time to close our session unless you would like to give us a few concluding words on specific aspects of our uh, topic that were not raised. Uh, otherwise, I think I, I will close and I would like to thank you very much to all three of you, of course, for agreeing to, to make yourselves available, to share with us uh, your thoughts on, on these absolutely major aspects of the NPT review process. Um, for you to know, we have recorded our one hour and 15 minute session, which will be uh, online on the YouTube channel of the Fondation pour la Recherche Stratégique and which will be uh, 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 largely promoted on the um, social networks. Uh, and uh, I will compile 
the 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 the, the fifth uh, the, the the five um, uh, webinars, including the last one. I hope we will have next month with our permanent representative uh, in Geneva, uh, Ambassador Yan Wang, and 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 hopefully some of his uh, colleagues there. And, and, and then we will uh, publish an executive summary of the main ideas uh, you all of you uh, have uh, have shared during these webinars in order to have something like a conference reader uh, to distribute and to diffuse largely before the opening of the NPTREF come next year. So thank you very much to, to all of you and, um, and uh, stay safe. And, uh, Hopefully, I, I, I really would like to, to see you physically one day in New York or in Vienna or elsewhere. Thank you very much and uh, have a very good afternoon and evening. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.